So let's get into the first application of network flow called the bipartite matching problem. And before we tackle the problem directly, let's get a shared definition of what it means to be bipartite, what it means for a graph to be bipartite. Oftentimes, when trying to define bipartiteness, it's useful to consider two colorability since they are the same thing. If a graph is bipartite, it is also two colorable. And if a graph is two colorable, it is also bipartite. Now, a graph is two colorable if we consider for every edge in the graph, right, in this undirected graph, if we can color the nodes such that for each edge, the two nodes that it connects are different colors. So if you look at this graph on the left and you look at every edge, you'll see that it always spans a red node and a blue node. There is no edge that goes between two red nodes or two blue nodes. And a graph is too colorable if it is possible to color the nodes in some arbitrary way such that this property is true. This is essentially the same as saying that a graph is bipartite if we can split the nodes into two groups, and for example, we will split them visually into a left and right side, such that edges in the graph only go between the two groups. And there is no edge that, say, on the left side connects to blue nodes, or on the right side connects to red nodes. When we do the split, this structure will be very useful for creating flow graphs that represent our problems um, in bipartite graphs. Oftentimes, for flow applications and flow and problems that you can solve with flow quickly, the underlying graph must be bipartite. And so let's consider the kind of other structures that a bipartite graph could have. We can see that trees will always be bipartite and also um, any graph on a grid. So any graph that is such that all cells of the grid represent nodes and two nodes are connected by an edge if they are cardinally adjacent, we can see that all grids are bipartite through this checkerboard pattern. Now, oftentimes the graph you're given in some form of problem might not be explicitly structured and in fact is one that you must develop yourself. And so we can see that Oftentimes, if we are trying to find bipartiteness in a graph, since for many flow applications, bipartiteness is very useful and very necessary, it is most common when the objects that you will consider as your nodes have two kind of classes. And oftentimes, objects of the same class do not interact with each other. And so let's consider an example of now the bipartite matching problem. And the bipartite matching problem is essentially we want to match nodes together in such a way that we can only match two nodes if they're connected by an edge. And we can only match each node with exactly one other node or at most one other node. And so we can actually solve this problem for bipartite graphs. An example of the problem directly is if you're given, say, a list of people and a list of companies, and each person has a list of companies they are willing to work for, and each company may only hire one person, and each person may only work for one company, then you want to pick the maximum number of people to be hired and which company they work for such that you maximize people that are hired. And so we can kind of notice the bipartiteness in this graph, right? There's no real connection between people or connection between companies, only between people and companies. And so, in fact, if we make the 
graph of connecting all people to the companies that they're willing to work for, then the additional edges that we need to add to this graph are we need to be able to connect, we need to connect the source to all people, and then we need to connect the companies all to the sink. And when I say connect, what I mean is add an edge of capacity one between them. And it turns out if we make this graph where we are trying to maximize matching people to companies, right? If we make this graph that I'm showing and run flow on it, the maximum flow will actually be the maximum number of people that can be matched. And so the reason why this works is because of our definition of maximum flow. We say that the maximum flow is the maximum number of edge disjoint paths, right? And we are trying to match people to companies. And we say that each person can only be hired once and each company can only hire one person. Well, what this means is that each person only gets one unit of flow to them. And they can only send that flow, that unit of flow, to exactly one company, which could then send it to the source. As in, each potential person choosing to work, being hired by a company, and that company choosing to hire someone, represents one path in this graph. And since the maximum flow requires all paths to be edge disjoint, for a company to hire multiple people, it would break this property because we can see that if this company tried to hire two people, there would be two paths going through this one edge, right? And if a person tried to work at multiple companies, then there would be two paths going through the edge from the source to that person. And so it turns out that the maximum flow from source to sink turns out to be exactly the maximum number of people that could be hired since Every edge disjoint path represents one person getting hired, and the act of taking that path stops other paths from hiring that person or using that company. Now, we can actually extend this problem in several ways by considering non unit edge weights. If we were to modify the capacity from any given edge that goes from source to a person, then that is equivalent to letting them work multiple jobs. If we were to modify any edge from a company to the sink, that is equivalent to letting that company hire multiple people. And also, if we were to modify the edges going between people and company, then say that's saying that a person can do this many tasks for company X and this many tasks for company Y and etc. Then we can also maximize the number of tasks. And so uh, where tasks and jobs might be interchangeable, but the word tasks is used since it's weird to have multiple jobs at a single company. And so this kind of shows the power of this bipartite matching structure. 